I'm going to read a, f a couple of short excerpts from a long memoir piece that's called The Death of William Burroughs. And William died, this is America, and William was born and died right there in Kansas, at St. Louis. He died in Kansas and he was born in St. Louis, Missouri. The Death of William Burroughs. William died on August 2nd, 1997, Saturday at 6.30 in the afternoon from complications from a massive heart attack he'd had the day before. He was 83 years old. I was with William Burroughs when he died, and it was one of the best times I ever had with him. Doing Tibetan Nyingma Buddhist meditation practices, I absorbed his consciousness into my heart. It seemed like a bright white light blinding but, but muted. I was the vehicle, his consciousness passing through me. A gentle shooting star came in my heart and up the central channel and out the top of my head to a pure field of great clarity and bliss. It was very powerful. William Burroughs resting in great equanimity and the vast empty expanse of primordial wisdom mind. I was staying in William's house, doing my meditation practices for him, trying to maintain the good conditions and dissolve any obstacles that might be arising for him at that very moment in the bardo. I had confidence that William had a high degree of realization, but he was not totally, not completely an enlightened being. Lazy, alcoholic, junky William. I did not allow doubt to arise in my mind, even for an instant, because it would have allowed doubt to arise in William's mind. Now I had to do it for him. What went in to William Burroughs coffin with his dead body. On Tuesday morning, August 6th, 1997, James Garaholz and Ira Silverberg came to William's house to pick out the clothes for the funeral director to put on William's dead body. The clothes were in a closet in my room, and we picked out the things that would go into William's coffin and grave, accompanying him on his journey in the underworld. His favorite gun, a 38 snub nose special fully loaded with five shots. William called it the snubby. The gun was my idea. William always said, you can never be too well armed in any situation. Of his more than 80 world-class guns, he often wore it on his belt during the day and slept with it, fully loaded, on his right side under the bedsheet every night for 15 years. Gray fedora, he always wore a hat when he went out and we wanted his consciousness to feel at ease dead. Sport jacket, black with a dark green tint, we rummaged through his closet and it was the best of his shabby clothes and smelling sweet of him. Blue jeans, the least worn ones were the only ones clean. Red bandana, he often kept one in a back pocket. Black shoes, jockey underwear and socks. Black shoes, the ones he wore when he performed. I thought 
the old brown ones that he wore every day because they were more comfortable. But James Grauholz insisted. There's an old CIA slang that says getting a new assignment is getting new shoes. White shirt. We had bought it in a men's shop in Beverly Hills in 1981 on the Red Knight Tour. It was his best shirt. All the others were a bit ragged. And even though it had become tight, he'd lost a lot of weight, and we thought it would fit. Necktie, blue, hand-painted by William. Moroccan vest, green, Velvet with a gold brocade trim given him by Brian Geisen 25 years before. In his lapel buttonhole, a rosette of the French government's Commandeur des Arts et Lettres and the rosette of the American Academy of Arts and Letters, honors which William very much appreciated. A gold coin in his pants pocket, a gold 19th century Indian head $5 piece, symbolizing all wealth. He would have enough money to buy his way in the underworld. An old worn silver coin, James said, what about the Alastair Crowley coin given to William by Anthony Balsh? I didn't answer because I thought it was a bad idea. The doors of hell were already open for William, and he did not need any encouragement. James and Ira laughed mischievously and said, yes. His eyeglasses in his outside jacket pocket, a ballpoint pen, the kind he always used. He was a writer and sometimes wrote longhand. A joint of really good grass. Junk. Just before the funeral, Grant Hart slipped a small white paper packet into William's pocket. Nobody's going to bust him, said Grant. William, bejeweled with all his adornments, was traveling in the underworld. I kissed him. An early LP album of Us Together, 1973, was called Biting Off the Tongue of a Corpse. I kissed him on the lips. But I didn't do it, and I should have.